All right, we are back on number two. What are we doing? Future proofing your future. Now this one, I'm gonna tell you, I never have an issue telling people that I, I was just not the college, college me school. I did very well, by the way. But I, I wasn't focused. I couldn't stay disciplined. I wasn't the kind of person that you can leave in a chair and the teacher teaches. And while they're teaching, we're just sitting there. Why am I doing the robot? I don't know, it just felt like a robot moment. Yeah, y'all know that was coming. I don't even think I did that right. But whatever the case, skill stacking. Wow, skill stacking is a thing, by the way. I think I showed you earlier, I have over 150 skills across 30 different industries from, I, there's probably not an industry, I don't even know, I thank goodness for consulting. And if anyone ever wants to go across industry, I will tell you, there are nonprofit organizations all over the world who need your skill who need your skill, you know? And so across the different industries, they're working in different domains, different industries, skill stacking is the thing. So guess how we're gonna go and really start to immerse ourselves in skill stacking. Are you all ready? Cause we're gonna do this in real time. We're gonna start with my CB. From my CB, we're gonna move um, through the CB and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step where I actually went to get the skills because now all of this stuff is available for you guys online. Back then in 1995, we didn't have everything. We actually physically had to go get a certification. We had some online stuff, but we had to go at, you know, to a physical location, get the training. <sighs> you all have this online now. There's no reason that you can't say that I'm gonna build 20 skills a year so that I can become this unique being in this digital space that's offering and bringing more and more value. The more skills you have, the more mastery across different and diverse sets of capabilities, the more value you bring to the world, my friends. So let's go. We're gonna do this in real time. I'm gonna go grab my CV. I took out all the company names. So you should be able to see that my actual my first company started with a company that did a lot of training. Um, they did they were a vendor for Microsoft training. It was back. I didn't even put it up there. It was like a 1993. So I didn't put that up there because that's like long time. And we started, you know, basically I traveled. I learned all of the stack of so much. And that's when I got introduced to Vizio, which allowed me to do a lot of modeling. And back at that time, I worked with manufacturing companies. So I got to do a lot of modeling. I did not go to school for that. I had to go to training and get certifications. Um, back then, it was like Irwin. You can look it up, E-R-W-I-N and B-P-Win, which are all solution enterprise architecture. They're ways that engineers build models. So imagine me, you know, young. I just dropped out of school. In fact, I think I put that in my in, in my CV for you all, just so you can see. I, 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 I attempted to go to HBCU. I grew up in Dublin, Ohio. Um, and, uh, you know, it, we're not, I just wanted to, uh, Dublin, Ohio, we'll talk about that in a moment, but I wanted to go to HBCU. I dropped out my first six months so many times. It's not even on my CV because I left and didn't get anything. It was as if I didn't even exist there because I left so soon. But my mom got sick. My brother got a football scholarship to Ohio University. And, you know, I had to go take care of the family. My mother, um, I don't mind sharing. I had epilepsy at the time. Still battles, um, but medicine and technology have come a long way. I'm so grateful. But I dropped out. But I didn't care. <laughs> I couldn't sit. I don't even know if I did. Did I even go to any classes? Like, I don't know if I even went to any classes. I know I used to play spades and all kind of stuff. I don't even know. But I was smart. I just couldn't stay focused. I couldn't sit in class. I couldn't, you know, robot teacher bell rings. Then you move to the next. I know I keep doing this robot thing. I think I feel like I need some music. Then try to go to University of Houston. I dropped out multiple times. And every time I dropped out, it wasn't in vain. I either I started working with startups. Remember, my mom was in tech a long time, hiring tech people um, in the retail industry she was in. Uh, and so it was amazing because I always found myself working in tech stuff, right? So then finally, 
when I got through my journey, knowing knowing that I'm, I'm just not going to go back to school, I love tech. And so I went to a large energy company, um, went to a consulting firm and was able to land my first opportunity. Remember, I told you I learned uh, how to model. I went to got the certifications to do do architectural modeling. So I got a chance to do business process mapping architecture. I'm going to show you where all of that is. So let's go so that you can start to see that this is the foundation of skill stacking, understanding how to connect the dots, understanding how it is that you can be able to look at systems systems, people, and processes. How do they come together? And so you're ready? Let's go to Google. And so here, um, you know, let's try that again. Let's do. All right, let's go to Google. So you'll see that there is the business analysis body of knowledge. It's the IIBA, who I am just a big advocate. Um, they do so much to build the skill set. Now, it's not about becoming a business analyst. There are foundational skills that you really need in order to understand business, in order to understand research. I mentioned earlier macro, micro uh, factors in the economy. How do you take what's happening? And so if you know that we're going through inflation, how do you future proof your business? What are the skills that you need to do the current state assessment, future state assessment, interviews so that you can conduct them with formality? How did I learn all of this stuff? Well, you all now have a big guide. I mean, I actually had to go to classes to understand, learn, but the IBA is free. Business analysis, body of knowledge, I put in PDF. So whenever I know that I wanna find a PDF, I do a, a specific search because I wanna cut to the chase. I don't need a bunch of blogs and that all comes in handy. I want the big, I want the guide. So you'll see what I put in and look what pops up. For free, look at that, 514 pages of goodness. There is no reason you are not building all the skills, everyone, that you need over the, oh my gosh, you should just say over the next year, I'm going to become so smart. I'm going to build 10 new skills as a skill stacker. Become, I'm a serial skill stacker, by the way. I still stack skills and we're going to keep going. So the business analysis, body of knowledge, um, let's just do the table of contents super quick so that you can start to learn and see what things that, and so you'll see that it teaches you step-by-step step how to do requirements analysis, how to build your stakeholder map, how to do designing of requirements, all of the things that you need to do to approach business analysis engagements. Um, so this is how I started my world, right? Eliciting, you know, doing assessments, solution assessments, enterprise assessments. This is all free. Stuff. financial analysis on page 224. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Organizational modeling. Look, you got this in one guide. I had to go get certifications separately for many of this stuff. SWOT analysis, use case scenarios, 500 pages of goodness. We love IIBA. The diagrams, all of the things that you need to do in order to understand the world around you, strategic analysis, it's where I started my strategy. It's where I started to understand not just technology, but how do we do strategic analysis so that I can put together whenever people are building applications or they're building models for their applications, I knew and understood without ever programming. I built a world because I didn't want to know how to code. I can't code. I, I, I love people who code. Developers are like my favorite people in the world. Some of my favorite. I love designers. I love developers. They're incredible. I was neither. So I had to find my little niche in the world. And mine was architecture, strategy, business consulting. I'm like, yeah, I found my rhythm. I found my flow in tech. Ooh, look at that. Requirements design. Yes, it's feeling good. Requirements analysis, cycle management. Oh, this is so awesome. And so look at all of this. It teaches you step by step, right? how to really start to move the needle for your world so that you can start to create and add more value to the people around you. So we're not gonna go through all of this, let's keep going. The other big skill that was important was project management. 
Product management helped me with the organizational skills that I needed to bring to others. Um, so now I took that to a whole nother level where I can stand up digital transformation offices, standing up full frameworks, creating full frameworks because I had a foundation. So PMBOK was um, the, the project management body of knowledge. You can put in the PDF, go to Google, put it in yourself. Oh, and guess what? Look at this guide. 579 pages. It was free. You can just learn this stuff for free. This is amazing. I just wish I had this back in the 90s. We didn't. But let's look at some of the things that you can do. So they talk about being able, it's the full project management life cycle. It's everything end to end. And then they've integrated new capability, integration at cognitive ability, integration at context and complexity. So there's so much richness and goodness here. And I'm just going to go ahead and click it so that you'll get a chance to kind of see what that experience is like. And so all of these, um, you know, uh, our ability to be able to understand how complex large scale organizations work. How do we bring those skills of people together in every single knowledge area across uh, their business from technical to leadership, to processes, to insight now, all of this capability, you get it here. And so there's just goodness. I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit so that you can kind of see, um, you know, some of the, uh, big topics, but how to create a project charter, what are all the inputs, the stakeholder map, um, all of the requirements that we just talked about with the business analysis. So all of this goodness, look at these inputs, the charter, the enterprise factors. I was talking about the macro economic, the data gathering. This is just incredible stuff and it teaches you stuff step by step. Okay. So, um, you know, another big skill that you'll see that I had is governance. So from ITIL to CMMI, actually in my resume, we can go back to it. Uh, I list a lot of them. Well, why is it important to know? So from Prince to, um, I went and literally went to courses for all of these OPM3, which is all about the organizational change and program management, TOGOF, SOA. You'll see that those are architectural, enterprise architectural um, capabilities and we'll talk about in a moment. But all of these ITIL, these are governance from Six Sigma. I just encourage all of you, you don't have to wait for college. I don't know where they teach this in the curriculum, but regardless if you get your degree, you, you never stop learning. And I think that this is the point of what I've been saying for a long time. And so you saw that and let's go. And so all you do is put in CMMI, I put in guide PDF. Let's see what pops up. And look at this right here. SEI or the Software Engineering Institute, you'll see all of um, the goodness that you can get. Uh, this was all prepared from Carnegie Mellon. Um, this is really exciting because you're able to go through and let's um, just look at what major things. Um, so it's all about the practices, the processes, all of the development areas. Um, this is amazing because again, I had to actually go to class. Um, all of this information is here for you. Um, it's amazing how you're able to go and learn. And so let's look at the table of contents, all of the maturity levels, the capability, maturity models, all of the capability modeling. This is where I started really understanding frameworks, how frameworks are put together. How do you start to look at business processes, improve business processes, re-engineer business processes. Now, look at those skills. You started with the business analysis, with the print box project management, and now you're moving forward with understanding governance frameworks and process management. Everyone, these are the fundamentals. It's like building a foundation of opportunity, especially within the tech space and even in the business space, consulting space. It really is gonna help you build a foundation uh, that's needed in order for you to unlock greater value around you. And then when you put all that together, um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put, um, so that you can get another understanding, we'll go to the architecture stuff in just a minute, PDF. So the ITIL PDF, um, this is the International Institute. These are like standards of governance. And so um, ITIL V3, I think that this should be a guide and it is. And um, so it's all about, you know, 
how is it it's like a huge infrastructure library for continuous improvement for standards uh, they have all of the case studies in here and templates as well and so again this is another fundamental framework for you to add to your skill stack right because we're becoming serial skill stacker to where you can have hundreds of skills right and be able to go across multiple industries and move your career in a way that you never had before it's all right here isn't that isn't that awesome no you're awesome you're awesome all of you're awesome all right let's keep going so another skill stack um so you'll see all of that across my cv uh let's just go back down we may skip a couple of things because a lot of that was used um, at a big tech company that I work with, I was able to then start my SaaS career. So you see, that was back in 2004 that I started working in SaaS. At the time, it was Siebel. Um, I'm very grateful to have learned and understood all of the modules. Today, you can actually go learn CRM for free, I mean, practically. I know that even there's the Trailblazer. Um, I, I'm going to go there, I mean, because it's so super simple. And let's go here. And it's all available to you all. And it's a CRM SaaS. And, um, you know, and we're able to, uh, let's go here. So I'm going to start this one again. So you'll see um, that there are all types of ways. I mean, even SaaS now today, you all can do Trailhead. So, um, and you all can do Trailhead. Start that whole thing over. And so, Today, CRM, uh, you can go learn so many different capabilities. Uh, if I go type in Trailhead, okay, and CRM, uh, you know, I'm able to go and Trailhead has a lot of modules. And all of this, you just sign up, literally. You can get started. There's so many skills you can learn. This is unbelievable. So this, you know, really is an opportunity for you to skill up. And it says it here, skills for the future. Get started for what? Another free, another free site? Are you? I know you guys are gonna get tired of me saying, where was this at when I was you know, in career, early in career, but you have all of this. And so there's so many things that you can learn um, and get your credentials and badges. And so this is just exciting, right? Let's go back to my CV. And here's what we can talk about all of my enterprise architecture. I think that this is really what propelled my career. Um, the moment that I said that I'm going to go further, that it's not just going to be about my skills and business process, reengineering process, architecture, um, again, all of this, I still hadn't had a degree. I still hadn't gone back to school by 2005. I think I decided to go online around this time. Um, just because I knew I had to have a degree to be a leader, but I think it was just University of Phoenix at the time. I was just like, I just, after University of Houston, after dropping out over a two year, three year, actually over a four year period. So enterprise architecture was something that was super important to me. Um, I had all these skills that we were building from business process to project management to architecture from the business process side, um, the logical modeling, the physical modeling of things, um, just so many skills that I captured over that, you know, that that seven, eight year period. It was it was amazing. 
Um, I dabbled with tech startup at the time. There were friends who were starting their tech startup. So giving them free business process mapping, um, you know, pro bono. So sorry. I invested sweat equity. That's the way to see it. Um, and then started working for a nonprofit as well, investing in them to get the skills in return. And then enterprise architecture. So back in 2005, I, I knew that this is something that I was super excited about. And so let's just go and go look at where today you're able to go get all these really cool architecture. And so uh, we can we could just do something here. So I'm going to put in uh, SOA enterprise architecture and PDF. And let's do guide. And let's just see if this is going to give us um, a guide that will help us. And here's a practical guide. Let's see, that's federal service, service oriented. Here's some design strategies. I don't know if this is an actual PDF. Let's take a look. But I'm going to show you something else as well. So this looks like it does. Uh, 26 pages. Let's see. Oh, okay. So this is an industry one, right? Where they broke down all the business processes within uh, that specific space. And then uh, they brought in services oriented architecture, <laughs> um, step by step, in order to be able uh, to take all of the modules. You saw a very monolithic approach to the way that they were approaching architecture. Um, and so this is the beginning way for me to learn and understand enterprise architecture. I'm going to show you something else. So YouTube is really the um, YouTube is really the main place I go to uh, when it comes to free. I'm a hands-on person. So I'm going to do enterprise architecture tutorial. And there's so many people who just are truly incredible. Um, this is one who's explaining enterprise architecture. It is the beginning. Why is it all important? Um, they're actually giving you all of the components of enterprise architecture. Now, let's talk about why this is important. L later in my career, I realized that all of the software architecture has to have a uh, cloud, even cloud architecture. As we move to SaaS, software as a service, PaaS, platform as a service, um, IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service. And now uh, we're moving to XaaS, uh, which is everything as a service, um, but has to have fundamentals in the way. So whether, you know, there are all these different companies, whether Google, whether Amazon, uh, whether it is, um, you know, all these other companies, right, uh, that have capabilities um, in their stack. They, you know, if you go look up Lambda architecture, you'll see that majority uh, of the, even though they call things different, um, their stack is different, their servers are different there. All their environments have different com named components, but the underlying architectural capabilities are really pretty much similar. If we're talking AI, we're talking data ingestion, we're talking about maybe building service bus, all of the things that it takes in order to get data through the pipeline, being able to massage that data, do something with it, contextualize it, uh, put it in machine learning, put cognitive on it, and then being able to get it to um, you know databases. All of that has something in common. So enterprise architecture really allows you the ability to understand how not only software works uh, at a high level, how the technology, underlying technology works, but how the people participate in it. So the roles, the actors, and then the processes, and then all of the use cases on top of that. Knowing this information is invaluable to you. I don't care what industry you're in, you can always look at a problem and be able to take systems thinking to solve problems. And so, really being able to take advantage. Um, there are so many people introducing, but then there is also solution architecture. And uh, there are like here basic essentials. Um, so there are different companies who are going to have their different software stacks. AWS has a solution architect. Um, they introduce it here just to get the full course. So 
we really want you to start to think about, again, skill stacking doesn't mean that you're going to master something and do one thing and that's all you do. It means that you're introducing yourselves to multiple different skills so that you can continue adding unique value into the marketplace. And these things are available mostly free. I think even Udemy, um, when I go look up Udemy, and so we're just going to do Udemy. Um, and I had it up there, Enterprise Architecture. And so let's go take a look and see if in Udemy, and I, and I see LinkedIn has courses as well. And Udemy looks like they have courses as well. So their intro where you can start to learn and understand um, about the basics, um, even they have mobile enterprise architecture. So all of these things are really available to you and super excited that uh, that you're going to take this journey to start stacking your skills. You skill stacker. That sounds good. You're like a serial skill stacker because you're awesome. Serial skill stacker. Does that sound cool? I don't know. I know, but I know that I love stacking skills. So then I went on, you'll see through my CV, where I went and worked for a big tech consulting firm that was a partner of Microsoft's. Oh, you're talking about everything. At the time, they were doing app modernization. So, you know, being able to go and mine thousands of apps through a tool that you click a button and it can tell you the last time code was used. You know, I didn't have to code it. I just needed to understand the output of the reports that were coming. So they were all visual, visual, visualized through visualization. I'll say that word. Can you say it with me? Visualized through visualization. Ah. So all of that. And um, then I was able, and many of these products took place at the same time. I worked in the oil and gas. They were doing optimizations of their apps as well um, through real-time tools. That was a lot of enterprise architecture. I got to literally put this stuff into play where we were mapping and modeling how people were using and interacting. Now, a lot of it's called jobs to be done. Uh, and, it's, and it's an entire area within human-centered uh, design, which is incredible that these things keep building upon. So now I can go to human center design and understand that world because I have the fundamentals of business processes, process reengineering. See where see how see where we're going, we're stacking these skills. All the while I haven't coded not one time. I'm just kicking butt in tech, rocking it out. Because I just decided to go do things that were scary, super scary, and just go do them. Screwed it all up, messed it all up, did everything wrong. And it's just okay. It's just okay. I just don't mind failing. And I think we got to get that mentality. Don't mind failing. GIS, um, geographic information system. I got to learn a lot about geolocation at the time before we had, uh, that was before Google Maps and uh, Waze, um, which we are always happy when people innovate and go beyond enterprise to consumerization. It is amazing. And that's why I said you have something locked in you that's incredible. And then automation. So I just showed you where to go get a lot of that. Um, more enterprise consulting. I did a startup um, because I started really getting into AI at the time. That was back in um, 2010. Uh, you know, the market, um, we had a, it just went bust um, and uh, the housing market. And so I found myself, um, you know, laid off uh, from the big consulting firm. Um, and I had to go take all these other jobs. I, I knew I wanted startup. So that meant no apartment. Me and my dog uh, couldn't afford it. And we just kind of did this car thing for a little while and this little motel thing for a little while. I mean, that was no fun. But I tell anyone, when you are, when you know that you're getting somewhere in your journey, in your destination, there are times that you're just going to have to make the sacrifice. And for us, you know, me and my little doggy at the time, um, we just made, you know, I said, I just got to make the sacrifice. I can't go home, can't depend on my family. I was, you know, much older then. Um, and I just said, you know, we'll figure it out. It's not the worst thing in the world to sleep in a car. I put all my stuff in storage at my grandmother's house. And we just had to rough it for about two months until I got a call. Um, you know, startup thing didn't work. We went all the way through angel funding. Um, didn't work out, but that's okay. I learned a whole lot. Um, and then I had to go back into corp. 
And again, kept going with architecture. You'll see all of these skills on and on and on. And then I got another call to go to a bigger firm. And this is where all of my years of experience. And by the way, I was almost 40 when I got my degree. And it was right around this time in this consulting firm and startup that I had that time. And uh, I got it online. It's a degree that I don't even think means anything. Uh, it was from university. I don't have a problem with the University of Phoenix. But by that time, I had so many years, 15 years, you know, like 15 years of just hands on, piled down innovation, creating a path of certifications, really making myself incredibly valuable. That is where I spent my time. And all I'm saying is everyone is different. I wanted immersive hands-on experience. I love startup, I love tech, and I wanted to be immersed myself in it. School couldn't give me that at the time. Here's what I'm saying to all of you. You gotta have multiple paths. Some of you are gonna love school and go get your PhD. I have friends who got their MBA, their PhD. They are awesome. It's a lot of work and I wish I was that smart and that disciplined. But then you gotta remember, I've been immersed in from AI to machine learning, to cognitive building and architecting things on the edge um, within cloud environments and, and just really plowing the field at blockchain. And, the, and, and so some people wish like, oh my gosh, I wish I had 15 years or 20 years of experience with that. The world has changed. So you have multiple paths. You can take the certification path. You can take the academia path. There are many disciplines where you can't get around it. If you go be a physician or an attorney, um, you know, chemical engineer, there are things you can't get around it, but there's a whole new set of occupation titles. More than a hundred million new job titles will be created over the next 10 years. What does that mean for you? Oh my gosh, it is incredible because some jobs will go away, but many will be birthed as a result of what's happening across the industry, the AI, digitization, automation. It's just unlocking new job titles all over the place. So that's where I've always wanted to stay is at the edge. There's nothing wrong with that. And so you'll see that as we continue to go, um, then all of this came. Um, you'll see the next step, all right? So how do we begin to learn more about, you know, now we went going into architecture when it comes to cloud, SaaS, um, you know, you'll see uh, all of the things in 3D, holographic capability, conversational platforms. This is where everything has been so fun over the last 10 years, the last decade has been incredible. And so now let's just go take a look at where you can go get some of this latest stuff. I think that that's what's awesome. And the other thing is neat because, you know, you can go get a lot of these certifications um, and get these classes for less than $100. You know, that's what's so amazing. All right. So let's go look and see some of the really cool things that I did to learn um, AI. So custom vision is free. It's visual intelligence where you're able to understand how to train models, how to label um, your model, you know, your images, and then how to, you know, take what we call REST APIs or application programmatic interfaces to be able to tag the collection and then being able to monitor and evaluate the models. And so this is all a part of the AI um, uh, learning. Custom vision is a part of the cognitive stack. And so, yeah, just go to customvision.ai. and sign up for free, or you may not even have to. You upload your image, it's gonna show you how to train the model, and then it's gonna show you how to evaluate the results of the model. Now you're like learning AI, not needing the code. Again, we're still gonna need developers always, we're gonna need programmers, but we need you too. People like me, I was counted out, but can't count me out, no because we're too awesome. We have too much to offer. All right, so we got that. And um, now all of the AI education also. So AI.Google education, you'll see that up here. Free, look at all this. So much opportunity to be able to learn AI. It's just, it's just incredible. And so for me, it wasn't just about the architecture. Um, the architecture is crucial and critical 
Um, but, you know, I, I think I had actually uh, an architecture here. But you're also, it's important that you know the stack, that you understand um, the big data and intelligence stack. But being able to know why you're doing what you're doing, add context, going out to McKinsey, to Deloitte, some of the big four reports, to Gartner um, and to Forrester, all of these research reports, being able to come here. I love connecting the dots because I stay in research. And so now you evolve the skills that you've learned to really start to understand how do you help people, leaders to lead their markets, bringing in special insight. And so adding this level of education really becomes incredible. It becomes amazing. Uh, the other big thing, I went into IoT, I told you blockchain and uh, hey, these things are available online as well. And so I went and purchased the Raspberry Pi kit, an Arduino kit, got the boards, um, and then went and learned uh, actually on YouTube, IoT for beginners. Um, I, I did like little things um, like helping me to understand how to build out really cool projects. And so STEM, I know this is for kids, but STEMpedia is awesome. And so I just think that everyone should get a lesson in just learning how to do something basic. And so you'll see that they have these activities. Um, you know, here you can just send data to the cloud. Just basic. Get data from the cloud. Set up your own little weather station. And so I did um, when I first went into IoT. You got to remember, everybody's learning. We're all on the same level playing field. Yeah? We all are. So it's important. Don't get intimidated. Everyone is learning. All of this stuff is new, right? The metaverse is new. And believe it, we're, we're 10 years out probably before we can get it right, bringing physical things together with virtual things. Um, I've done a lot uh, in this space, in the enterprise space, when it comes to extended reality, bringing in AI machine learning into uh, those spaces through the architectural capability and then helping customers being able to realize with their investments. All of that, just by lighting up your world, trying something new, again, stacking skills. Stacking skills ain't a game. It's power in stacking skills. And so I just want all of you, you know, to really start to um, to understand the power that's around you. And all of these things are, are being made available to you. All right. All right. Well, we got through the CV. We got through lesson two, skill stacking. Hope it wasn't too boring for you. But we got to get through this. We got to get through this. No other way but to get through it. So now we are going to go to number three. All right, I'll see you in a minute. We'll take a break. Hope you wrote all this stuff down. See you in a minute.